Within the stock market, there lies a shadowy, mysterious world with a whole lot of secretive, morally skewed players and, strange, semi-illicit rules. This mysterious element is the world of dark pools. This last year has been loaded up with speculation and a whole lot of strange happenings to inspire that speculation in regards to family favorite stock, AMC. Today, we're taking a deep and immersive dive into the world of dark pools and the peculiar happenings regarding AMC. Folks, this right here is a juicy one. Let's start things off with what I would call an incredible, possibly groundbreaking question. What in the hell is a dark pool? A dark pool is a private electronic transaction network most often maintained by major financial and securities companies where stocks are bought and sold by big money clients of those companies. Because this darkened matching of buyer and seller is done under control of the institution, the bid, offer, and sale prices are not published to exchanges. The dark pool title refers to the lack of transparency within these shadowy realms. An important note for you, dark pool operators have the ability to route orders to public exchanges for you know everyone to see or to their own private dark pool networks, depending on availability, pricing, and client preference. Dark pools are shrouded in mystery. And with that have been cause of a pretty thorough amount of speculation in the world of financial foul play. You may remember a very prominent showcase of financial foul play on January 28th of this very year. It was a week of thrills, a week of strong wills, a week of pure unprecedented excitement because GME and AMC were on the verge of greatness. They kept breaking through every single door of there's no way and it's too high and this is irrational. We crushed those barriers and we still had room to climb. But as I'm sure you recall, the morning of January 28th, our power was stripped from our hands. Loads of popular major exchanges, most notably Robinhood and Weeble, shut down the ability to buy all these high speed movement backed securities. They took away the buy button, but conveniently kept the sell button. To say the least, it was a dark day. At this point, it's time we introduced another character to our story. And if you follow this world decently closely, you're familiar with this character. Please welcome Citadel. Boo. 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 Citadel LLC is what most at this point would call a villain in our tale. Citadel, for those unfamiliar, is an American financial powerhouse. This beast is broken up into two main parts. One, Citadel, the infamous hedge fund, and fun fact for you, the 10th largest hedge fund in the entire world ranked by assets under management. And two, Citadel Securities, the absolute largest market maker in the United States, handling a grand total of 40% of every stock trade that occurs here. But wait just a second. There is, in fact, a third branch that makes up the bones of Citadel. And I bet you've never heard of it. That branch would be Citadel Connect, Citadel's very own dark pool platform. Or technically, Citadel's off exchange trading immediate or cancel order platform, which of course makes it technically not an alternative trading system, which allows them, fun fact, to not be registered as an ATS, which means they don't have to report their trading volume to FINRA, which of course is overseen by the SEC. Huh. Well, anyway, I'm sure everything's fine. Morality is green. Everyone's good people, right? Either way, Citadel was speculated to have been involved in January 28th's chaos. The talk of the town stated that Citadel must have been the punch behind Robinhood's decision to halt buys on the momentum stocks. That they had to do what needed to be done to save the shorters of the time. And so they put the power down on the Robinhood team to halt it up and thus stir the waters of war. This debate has been ongoing for a great many months now. But it's also worth noting that not a speculation here, 
Robinhood does make up a majority of their profit from Citadel Securities by means of payment for order flow, which is the fancy way of saying profit a broker makes from a market maker for routing our trades to that market maker. All right, that was a lot of info spewing on to you. But now you've got the scene. Citadel, Robinhood, AMC, GME, Momentum, Elusive Activity, Dark Pools. At this point upon my journey, I had a big question. Why do these dark pools exist? In the context so far, they sound to be built on an evil presence. But what's the positive justification for existence? Well, folks, here's the thing. Big institutions trade in big numbers. If these institutions make these massive moves on the open market, they could single-handedly move the whole market. This would make things very expensive, fabricated, and possibly time-consuming to accommodate. But in a dark pool, institutions can quickly, effectively swap massive orders without the market having any idea. So they can go by VWAP, Volume Weighted Average Price, and not single-handedly tank or rise the price as the orders go through. But of course, with light comes hypothetical dark, especially when the pool is dark. It's a dark pool. It's a dark pool. This is the part of the show where we dive into the thickest of depths because I researched this next portion with all my might. Let's talk about the hypothetical bad in all this. But most specifically, let's talk about what exactly could be occurring right now, right before our eyes, now and across this last year of intensity in terms of AMC. AMC has a lot of abnormalities, folks. I'm a big fan of strange, curious, questionable, wild, and generally interesting slash inexplicable things in the world of money. Thus is the nature of this channel. So AMC falls right in line. You know the thick of it, but Here's another classic. Quick sum up with Chris. In the last week of January 2021, short squeeze season was upon us. GME ran like mighty hell, followed by our beautiful little movie theater empire. When a company on the verge of bankruptcy has a sudden 10X explosion within 22 days, there tends to be some casualties of the investment world left behind. Most notably, the short betters. And you better believe AMC was tender with the touch of the shorts. AMC had a legendary run, a save from the face of death, a wealth exchange of the masses, a movement like no other, except GME. <laughs> but before we knew it, the fun run was over. AMC went from $1.91 to $20.70, back to the fives. Many believed the iconic short squeeze had squoze until something even crazier happened. In June of 2021, the fun began anew. AMC was given another taste of life, of thrills, of joyous potential. It made its way back towards 10, then 20, then even further, 30, 40, what in the holy heck, 50. This son of a gun ran itself all the way up to 7262 on June 2nd, suckling up every last headline yet again. It, it did the unthinkable, to hit mainstream coverage, taste that momentum, then do it all over again months later. In the last four-ish months, AMC has made its way downward a bit, closer to tame once again, but still way up. All this to say, something still ain't right. AMC's level of shadow play, if you will, their dark pool percentage of trades is rising. This is strange. In May slash June-ish, there was an average of about 40% of all AMC trade volume amidst the dark pools. But then, in September, it was up to about 60% of all AMC trade volume being traded amidst the dark pools, with only 40% being traded in the light. In these last few weeks, dark pool volume percentage has touched 70%. I mean, that's a pretty insane amount of trades being conducted in the shadow realm, wouldn't you say? It sure sounds suspicious to see the dark pool volume rising while the share price slowly trickles down with the short percentage staying pretty much the same. But let's put our conspiracy caps on for a moment, if you will. Let's, let's call it our hypothetical, more paranoid analytical caps for the sake of this. Please, 
immerse yourself into the hypothetical. You're shorting AMC. The retail heathens are winning. They're trending on Twitter, they're crushing you, and you're losing millions. You're desperate now. <laughs> what in the heck are you gonna do? This is a social movement now and you're screwed. To close your short positions now, <laughs> you'll be upside down hundreds of percent in losses, you fool. So what do you do? Maybe you artificially apply pressure. But how? How would one? Well, in the dark pool, of course. Every time we can apply immense pressure at certain resistance points by buying immense amounts of AMC shares in the dark pool off the order book, no one will see that. But we'll turn right around and we'll sell those immense amounts of shares right on in to the open market. And you better believe that'll show up on the order books. That'll scare them. We apply enough artificially crafted pressure, people will really start selling. And we'll be back on top. And if my fellow hedgies don't have AMC shares for us to buy up in the dark pools, well, fear not. Because perhaps in this hypothetical, we could just this once naked short sell the shares even though they may or may not exist. It's fine because no one will ever know. It's the dark pool, baby. Now, of course, this is all just a wild, bizarre hypothetical. A mere piece of fiction is all. Or is it? If our movie here is about dark pools, we need to sympathize with the character. We need to understand where they came from to understand the full scope here. We need the origins. Where did these darkened shrouds of mystery come from? Well, I think for that, it's best you immerse yourself. yourself. The year is 1979. Jimmy Carter's president. The stock market's in the midst of a pretty ugly year. The world is emotionally preparing for the 80s and on the morning of April 26, 1979, the SEC put in place a shiny new financial regulation known as SEC Reg 19C3, which allowed off-exchange trading of securities listed on particular exchanges. This was the birth of the dark pools. It wasn't until the thrill of the 80s came along for investors to start actually utilizing the opportunity that was this new secretive world of investing. Big money move investors began to conduct massive block trades in these newfound dark pools, which finally allowed secret large scale trades with no market impact whatsoever. 1986 spawned the first real deal dark pool trading venue known as After Hours Cross. These dark pools evolved and continued their excitement for the years to come. And then in 2005, the beautiful boys and girls at the SEC passed Regulation NMS, National Market System, which encouraged investors to discover a better price by bypassing the public exchange. And of course, this resulted in a large number of dark pools coming into existence from this point forward. This led to the birth of juicy potential for high frequency traders, especially. The dark pools continued to grow in appeal over these last 15 years with little bits of changes and alterations for alleged transparency and whatnot. But in reality, they've become more prominent than ever by far. The dark pools are like an invite only secret society getting more and more members hiding in plain sight. Brokers and banks are leveraging dark pools for high net worth clients by finding the absolute greatest matches for them within these pools. And without fear of spooking the markets in either direction. That's big. Over the last year, about 45% of all US stock market trades were completed within the dark pools. Compare that to an average of three to 5% back in the 90s and early 2000s. I mean, damn. So now we find ourselves in the midst of the biggest dark pools conspiracy of all time. We can all agree that AMC has been through a mysterious year. And we can confirm that within these dark pools, in theory, large money institutions, hedge funds, and market makers hold some real deal power. And we know Citadel has a lot of interest on the side of the big money short selling AMC rather than on the side of the retail folks buying shares. And we know that Citadel is the biggest market maker in the world and controls a massive dark pool. And, and, and we know Citadel 
buys a large portion of Robinhood's payment for order flow. So in theory, to say Citadel leverages their control, their purchased order flow from Robinhood by sending these buy orders that come in straight to the dark pools and the sell orders that come in straight to the open market to increase AMC sell pressure publicly? It's not that crazy of a theory, folks. So then, what comes next? How do you win against a dark pool? Well, the war continues on. The fact of the matter is, these dark pools are mysterious places. Lots of legitimate things occur within them, but now it seems the illegitimacy and sketchy practices are rising. So what the heck saves the day? How do retail investors win? How does AMC win? The clearest solution, in theory, is to ban dark pools from the US stock market. We've seen plenty of dark pool manipulation cases in the past, so we know moral mishaps are in the realm of possibilities. But like we've mentioned, dark pools are also theoretically supposed to have a strong good side. If Berkshire Hathaway decides to close out a position of theirs, proceeding to sell off millions of shares, that would artificially tank the company on the market that day. And that ain't good either. So then perhaps more SEC regulation is the need here. Maybe. That sounds sweet, doesn't it? Well, unfortunately, SEC regulation has been implemented on a whole lot of fun aspects of the market in the past. And if you can imagine this, it hasn't always gone extremely well. So maybe then the solution is to officially ban payment for order flow. If these smaller brokerages are banished from selling our order information to these market makers, the citadels of the world, perhaps that'll change the game because in theory, they can no longer manipulate retail orders into dark pools and order books publicly available, depending on which way benefits them the most. But then again, these market makers still hold a lot of money and a whole lot of power. So do you really think the banning of payment for order flow is enough to take away their ability to control the way these dark pools are used? So the real answer is, I don't goddamn know. How could I? I'm just some guy. This is an immensely complicated issue in the realm of a subject that's pretty loosely understood. These dark pools are drenched in secrecy, people. Every possible solution has a possible downfall right next to it. So thank God they don't give me the power to fix this. But I'd say there's something that needs altering amidst these mysterious pools of dark, because there's a whole lot of big questions that will eventually need some big answers. Either way, that right there is my take on the overview of this cold and eerie world of dark pools within the shadowy realm of the stock market. I hope you've enjoyed our deep dive together today. Please, oh please, comment and chat about it all. I love to talk about this stuff, so I'd very much love to hear what your take is on all of it. Is there a solution? Am I a misinformed idiot? Is AMC still a rocket waiting for takeoff? Should Citadel and Ken Griffin be boiled publicly in a big cauldron? Let me know your thoughts. But hey, seriously, thank you so much for watching this video. Check out more of my money lore series right here on YouTube. Go explore the fun. It's immersive. It's exciting. And also, if you're feeling like you might want to like a video, maybe, I don't know, subscribe to some guy. Well, let me be that guy. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you real soon. Be safe out there.